guys and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, this is Beauty with Love and my name is Leah. My channel revolves around anything and everything beauty including makeup, nails, and skincare, and hair care. And some other random stuff thrown into it. As you can see, I don't look like someone that is trying to do makeup from this era. That's because on Fridays, I do Flashback Fridays. And this is the 1960s. So. If you want to travel down this rabbit hole of 1960s, you will learn about some makeup tips and a little bit of history along the way. I hope you guys are interested in watching. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you haven't already. And let's go ahead and dive in. And I will be totally barefaced and not looking at all like this in three, two, one. Okay, so like I said in our intro, that we are doing the 1960s. And I'm gonna go ahead and just let you know on some of the things they did with the makeup as I'm going through on the history as well, but I'm gonna try to cover what they did with the makeup first so you're gonna understand what I'm doing to my face and I'll probably slip in little tidbits about it as I'm talking about the history. You know, in the early 1960s, people were like, okay, we're coming out of the 50s. We're still want to do some nice, some elegant eyes with some pale purples. And we're still doing like the pale colors, like the pale pinks and pale purples and all of that. And then like the loads of powder, you know, all over making that mask type effect. Remember that from the other video? So that was like in the beginning of the 1960s. And then in the mid 60s, there was more like a girlier style. They focused more on the simple girlish style of like makeup and looking cute and all of that stuff, just more sweet and kind of things. But there were a lot of things that happened in the 60s for makeup, like they were eye contouring. You know how we um, put the dark in the crease and all of that? Yeah, here we go with that. We're starting to contour things out. And the eyes were one of them. I personally picked the background on what would be for my eyes, but this pretty much was a universal type of thing. They did a light shade on their lids, and then they went ahead into the darker shade with like a gray, a beige, or a brown color up here. Sometimes they just lined it. You know you're seeing that in trends again now where they're doing the graphic type liner. Well, it's not a new thing. It was already done back in the 60s. Well, you know, they say fashion repeats itself, Take a look at the clothing. I know like clothing has repeated itself because just in my lifetime, I've seen trends that I wore when I was younger and they're now back in style. Crazy. Vidal Sassoon, you know you've heard, you know, I don't care how old you are, you've heard of Vidal Sassoon. Popped into the hair game, you know, the bouffants, oh yeah. You know, people wore their hair in the bouffants, the big comb, and the, just all that stuff, but they also wore it straight. Now, I wear my hair straight all the time, so I'm going to try to do a bouffant style. Don't judge. I'm going to try to do it, okay? Mary Quant Cosmetics came into the game, but Max Factor was still pulling strong. It was like big time eye game. You had some nude lips and some eye game. So your eyes were like front and center, you know, the contouring and all of that. Was, people would even go so far as to like draw little lashes right here. Now I could try that, but I don't really draw lashes on the bottom. We are headed into wing mode. We are taking this out because my, my eyelids are more hooded. They talk about like deep set, wide eyes, things like that. People started catering to their eye shape, which is really great. And so mine, I'm going to put like some brown up here. I'm going to add some white there and then we're going to wing this. Out. Now that you know a little bit about the makeup, and I'm going to talk you through it, but we're also going to talk about some history because you know with my Flashback Fridays, I like to add a little bit of history into it. This was the one of the their palettes that was in their box and it's cruelty free and it's distributed by BoxyCharm. You could probably get it on their website if you wanted to. These are the colors that are in there. I chose this because it has like this like shimmery shade right here and like some neutral there and then this bright white color. I really like that. I thought that would go really well with this um, eye look. We are going to have some overlappage from the 1960s to the 1970s type of some of the things that happened because you'll see things kind of crossed over. In November 1st, 1955, the Vietnam War started. It actually did not end until April 30th of 1975. That's a long war. 
And it was not really, you know, if you think about it, our guys that went over there were just not as appreciated as, say, our World War II vets or things like that. Which is really sad because they still went to war and they did all of this stuff for our country, but they didn't get the same type of praise, which is kind of sad if you think about it. It's not kind of sad, it's really sad. You know, when people put their lives on the line for us, we need to appreciate them. By the end of the war, you're going to hear me probably, I may mention this or brush over it quickly in the, um, with the Vietnam War still going on, I mean, talk about catastrophic events. This was a catastrophic event that was happening. This was a catastrophic war. All wars are catastrophic. But because it just, a lot of the times, people are passing away that shouldn't even be part of this. Women, children, men, I mean, innocent people, innocent people. Over By the time this war ends, there's over 3 million people dead. And this is just so sad, so very, very sad. The war actually ended, spoiler alert, for the 1970s. Um, the war actually ended in 1975 when the NBA tanks rolled right up into the presidential palace in Saigon. Saigon. If I pronounce that wrong, I'm sorry. Okay. Just rolled right up into it and it was like, boom, done. Okay. But the Americans had pulled out two years prior in 1973 when Nixon signed the Paris Accord, thus ending our involvement in the war. Which, I mean, so sad, so sad. Okay, you see how I've just completely like pulled it out? I've almost drawn it straight out. The Civil Rights Movement had begun in 1954. Remember we had talked about that, um, like talking about the Little Rock? And it didn't end until 1968, which, you know what, personally, they gave that time frame, but I do really think that people are still in this Civil Rights Movement. So as you can see, I have um, contoured this out and elongated out here, okay? Some of them did the really round eyes. I'm doing because I'm going with my eye shape and they offered a highlight to the brow bone. This is something we still do, you all know it. We still highlight our brow bone. Always want that little extra lift right there. Boom, done. Ooh, that's pretty. Pop up, that's the color of this. Now my eyebrows are not done. I'm gonna to try to make them more full because they are starting to edge on the more full side, more natural side. Another major tragic event it, that happened in 1960s was that our president, John F. Kennedy, was assassinated on November 22nd, 1963. They were driving in a parade and um, yeah, he was shot dead next to his wife. I can't imagine that. Like, be driving one minute with your husband, you know, just waving and doing your own, you know, not really doing your own thing, but supporting your country and showing everybody that you're doing your, you know, supporting your country. And then the next minute, they actually show footage of her, like, reaching behind her to grab the top of his head because she was worried that they might need that part for her husband. Not really accepting that her husband was probably already deceased. Horrific. I cannot imagine having to go through that. I hope I never have to go through that. I hope none of you all have to go through any of that. It was so tragic. He was deceased and there was nothing that she could do about it. And as a wife, that's just heartbreaking. I can't, I just can't imagine. So now I'm going to use Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner by Stila. I have never used this. Again, I'm using a new product. I'm trying to use everything that I haven't used yet. And I'm just going to do the outer two thirds of my lashes or my liner because I want to bring out my eye. And this was something that I did for eyes like mine. And this stuff we do for eyes like mine nowadays. Also in the 1960s, 1962 to be exact, but we had a Cuban Missile Crisis, as in like, you know, Cuba is really close to the United States because it's like really close to the end of Florida. And so, you know, we had a spy plane go over there and realized that they spotted some nuclear 
missiles over there and that's like super close to the United States and we were like, mm, this is not cool. In October of 1962, it really lasted only like 12 days. So I'm guessing they handled their business, you know what I mean? Like United States was like, mm -mm, no, can't have missiles that close. Because remember in previous, Castro had taken over and at first he was like, hey, I'm gonna do all this great stuff for the country. And then he flip flopped and backstabbed his own people and turn it into like another like communist type thing. I went ahead and put some NYX brow glue into my brows and plastered them down to my face because they said we're well groomed. And I'm just gonna take my Too Faced Super Fine Brow Detailer and this is in the color Soft Black and start filling in my brows. Just softly filling them in. You can always tell when I'm doing things softly or gently is because my hand is further back. Because they were using powder on powder on powder, I went ahead and grabbed my It Cosmetics Celebration Foundation in the, um, this is the powder form, and this is in the shade Light, yes, Light. And I'm gonna go ahead and just powder my face up. I didn't talk much about concealer or anything like that. So we're just gonna go ahead and just powder it uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my cup of joe, this coffee type color, and this is how I'm going to line my under eyes. They did not blend this out. This was like just lining their under eyes. And this is um, a black liner, and this is a pencil liner, and it is my LA Girl Shockwave liner in blackout. And this one I am going to kind of try to touch it to my lower lashes and then blend it out ever so slightly just to give it a more liner type look that's fluid with this, look, with this eye look or what you would even see on the runways in the 1960s. Just smudging this out ever so slightly because I want it to look more accurate. As you can see, it just gives it a nice definition. And of course, we're going to curl our lashes. If it's all about the eyes, then we really want those lashes to be prominent. I mean, there was a lot of stuff that happened in the 1960s. Truthfully, there's a lot of stuff that happens every year for every decade. If you break down every decade, like I am doing, I mean, there's just a lot of things that happened in every decade. And today I'm going to head and trying the Stila Huge Extreme Lash Mascara. And I have never used this before. I'm looking for the color, but it's in black. <laughs> and this is what the brush looks like. And I'm gonna go ahead and Put this on my lashes i'm always back combing which means like i'm wiggling but i'm like kind of going back and forth so that i get the top you know bottom of these lashes that's a good way to make it look really really black we're going to step into this little real her trio it is blush bronzer and highlight they are, they are paraben free, cruelty free, talc free, and gluten free products. And this is what they look like. The names are Goddess for the Shimmer, Blessed, and Incredible. Blessed, Goddess, Incredible. I'm gonna go ahead and just bronze up my face just a little bit, dipping into this incredible shade, tapping off any extra and going ahead. And I'm just gonna do a light bronze because in the pictures, people are not like heavily bronzed. You're just kind of lightly. The eyes are really the focus. And in another picture, some pictures you'll see really bright blue. But in truth, eyeliner was the big deal at this point in time. I'm just lightly bronzing up my face, not even really doing much of anything. Now I'm just going to go ahead and dip into Blessed, which is this color. Now remember that I had said that the civil rights protests ended in 1968. 
you know, I do feel like they, it's a work in progress t constantly. Oh, this is nice. It's got a little glow to it. But sadly, in 1968, one of the, I want to say pioneers in the civil rights activism, uh, Martin Luther King, was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. It is very sad, and he was at the age of 39. Young man still, prime of his life, and was just ripped out of this world. It is really devastating to think about why do we have to just kill off people just because, you know, there is freedom of speech. We have freedom of speech. We can peacefully protest. And it's just so sad. But keep it peaceful, people, okay? We don't need to be violent to cause, make a whole, you know, to make a point. You don't have to be violent to make a point. I mean, why? Kill more people? I mean, don't you think we've lost enough people? But he was sadly taken from this world as well during this de decade in a very similar way as John F. Kennedy. Both of them were assassinated. So sad. In fact, I mean, if you think of these two men who did so much, like they really paved the way for so many things for new civil rights activists and, you know, the Kennedy Space Center. You know, these, it's just very, very sad that these people were taken out of this world. Too soon, too very, very soon. And they were both shot and assassinated. It's just really, really sad. And now um, they did keep it very nude lip. lip. So we're going to go ahead and I have not used these before. This is the... These are the Wet n Wild Perfect Pout lip color. And I have in the shade 605B and 606B. I'm going to go ahead with the more peachy toned. This one is called... No more drama. It's kind of fitting with what I was just talking about, I think. He did like pale nude lips. So all you think that it all started out with like a certain family with that super nude lip, it didn't. It was already here. Fashion repeats itself. I personally do not like a super nude lip on me, but but I'm doing it for history and posterity. So with all the trials and tribulations of the 1960s, at the very end of the 1960s, there was a very important uplifting and happy and big thing that happened. And that was on July 20th of 1969, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon and opened up a whole new world for us. And that's where we get one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. And it really was. We have continued to explore I think about like Star Trek to explore strange new worlds. Um, if that's too young for you, check it out. It's like the intro to Star Trek. Um, to seek out new life and new civilization. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Well, that's what all of these rockets do and all of these shuttles and all of these astronauts do. At least it ended on the uptick there. And so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish up my hair, give me a little bouffantness going on, and I'll be right back. All right, well, this is the final look for the 1960s. I even managed to get my hair up in a big bouffant like this. Hey, you guys thought um, that originated in Jersey Shore, but apparently it originated in the 1960s. And so remember the beehives and the bouffant styles and all of that stuff? Think about that next time you think somebody else started the trend. I hope you really enjoyed this video. The 1960s was a really interesting era as every single era that I have discussed in the past. It was really surprising. This started off as a fun thing for me to do 
from the different decades and it has ended up with me learning a lot of things about our recent history which I have found very interesting. I hope you guys have really enjoyed this. Now, throughout October, I will be doing Freaky Fridays. So you can already figure out what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working on like different Halloween looks during the month of October. But in November, I will pick up the Flashback Fridays and continue on the path of 2020. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you for watching my videos. And don't forget, makeup can do a whole lot of stuff for the outside, but if you're not beautiful on the inside, chances are it's gonna show on the outside. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching.